Now it's time for Buy, Rent, Burn. This is the recurring segment of the podcast where each of us selects a game um, and we decide amongst ourselves which of those games we would buy, rent, or burn. And this week, um, our selections are Andy has picked Firepower 2000 for the Super Nintendo. This came out in 1992 and was published by Sunsoft. Um, Justin has selected A Boy and His Blob. Trouble in Blabonia. That's the full title. It's a mouthful. This is for the NES. Uh, It was released in 1990, published by Absolute Entertainment. And I have selected Metal Slug Advance for the Game Boy Advance. This was released in 2004, published by SNK Playmore. Um, Andy, let's talk about Firepower 2000. Sure. Uh, Firepower 2000 is a shoot-em-up. Uh, game and it's actually the sequel to silkworm for nes i don't know if you've ever played that but it, it is I kind have. of similar it is kind I of didn't similar even know that. yeah i mean it's it's the same tank look looking thing that uh that you use um you can you can play as like a jeep they call it but it, I th- to me it seems it looks more like a tank or a metal slug if you will yeah actually it does kind of look like a metal slug from the top down doesn't it <laughs> yeah and then you could play a helicopter too. I didn't play as a helicopter this time, but to me it reminds me quite a bit like uh, Raiden, which is one of my favorite series of shooters. Um, but the thing with this game is the music it just is really catchy. Um, it is made by Sunsoft, so they kind of are kind of known for their music, but at the same time, like I don't know how many shooters they actually did either, so it's got a good... Uh, action-y feel to it. So, kind of impressed by that section of the game. Um, I didn't get too far into it. It's kind of a hard game, at least for me. <laughs> I'm not great at shooters, even though I like them. Yeah, what well, do you guys think? And I didn't know, like, maybe this was just me, um, but I felt like I struggled a little bit with the controls for the tank or jeep or whatever a little bit. It was a little, um, I guess, boxy. I mean, there was, like, it was a little tough to move them the way I wanted to sometimes. Sure, and that's a, another th- important part to point out on how you aim your bullets in this game. You can go all eight ways to shoot shoot in this game, but it's a little awkward because it's kind of like pressing uh, the direction that you're going and then holding down the shoot button, and it, and it always stays that way. So you could constantly right. move any other direction, but you're still shooting the same direction you're going with... Uh, when you press down the the shoot button and it just seems like, like it would have been the perfect dual stick shooter. If you had, were able to make those controls. Yeah, Uh, exactly. But, but, but they didn't figure that out on that game. I mean, there, there was a way to do it like smash TV and, and such. Yeah. I was going to say, they could have totally, yeah, they could have totally kind of mocked that up with the four buttons. It would have worked. Yeah. Or it would have worked a little bit better potentially. Yeah. Yeah. I did think it was really neat. Not, I mean, I was playing it solo, obviously, but I did think it was neat how it was two player. Um, so you could have, you know, two people playing at the same time, which for a shooter, um, was kind of, I mean, it's not that common. Um, certainly not in those days. And it was interesting how you got the option between like a helicopter and the, the Jeep. So you could have one person taking on, you know, air vehicles and the other one doing the, the ground. Um, yeah. and now that you mentioned riding, that I actually like, top-down art style and just kind of enemy layout and background that that is pretty accurate it isn't too far off i uh i agree with that i i kind of like the option where you can actually play as either one the tank or the helicopter too um because you can do that in single player right like you can just play as a helicopter Yeah. yeah i i did the tank and i played through and ran into the train numerous times (laughs) <laughs> the one thing I, that takes you down. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I got uh, super annoyed with that power-up, too, like the orb. Because it's like, oh, yeah, power-up, you know, the first time. Because like, you just kind of assume this is a good thing, like from other games. But you have to blow it up, otherwise it kills you instantly. Oh, yeah. Which just <laughs> irritated the crap out of me, because I got all excited. I was like, my first power-up, explode. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> it's very misleading. But, yeah, no, it... Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I thought it was a pretty solid game. I mean, to me, not not any one thing about the game stands out above, like, you know, its peers, but 
uh, a solid package nonetheless. And I mean, this is a pretty reasonable game to pick up too, right? Like price wise, if you were to buy it today. Uh, I believe it's like 15, 20 bucks right now. So it's yeah, not, it's not too bad. bad for Super Nintendo prices. <laughs> right. That's kind of like almost where they start now. Yep. It's like 20 or 500. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, how about um, A Boy and His Blob? What are, what are your thoughts on that game? Well, I guess I went with that game because I remember I picked it up numerous times renting it from Video Rental Store. And um, I never really got very far. Like, each time I'd progress a little bit further. Um, it's a fun game, though. It's, you got, what, 10, 15 different jelly beans that you toss to the blob? It changes into different things, um, depending on the jelly bean that you feed them. So it's kind of an interesting game. You have to know what the jelly bean's going to do and plan where you get have to use the jelly beans, I guess. I ran into the issue a couple times where I used the ladder, expecting I could climb up onto it and it'd be just a little bit too far away from the ledge, so I kept falling. Mm-hmm. But, and then the cool. hole, you <laughs> put the hole someplace and end up falling all the way through next level but overall you know it's a fun game i I do like the uh, where you have to actually puzzle and figure the game out through the progress of the puzzle i guess but normally i'm not a big fan of that type of game but this one's pretty fun yeah it it almost plays as like a pc point and click adventure except instead of a point and click you're interacting with a blob through jelly beans (laughs) yeah I, I did enjoy too. Like if you missed with the jelly bean, the blob would cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always enjoyed too. Like I forgot, and then I laughed again. Um, how he'll never eat the ketchup jelly beans. Right. Like, <laughs> so I learned what the ketchup on. one is. Oh yeah. So you know what the ketchup one does? No. The ketchup one, if you throw it in a spot that where he isn't, he teleports to it. So if he's like stuck on a different level or plane. Yeah, that, like if there. you want to get him in a specific spot, you use the ketchup one, and it, he teleports right to that spot. Interesting. I just thought it was worthless. It was yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, this definitely does remind me a lot of like those point-and-click adventures, especially like Sierra ones where they're kind of obscure mm-hmm. on some of their stuff. I remember renting this as a kid and probably <laughs> maybe getting two treasures. That's about it. And after that, I could not figure it out. There's there's a couple key actions in that game that I don't know. You you guys probably got farther than this than when you were younger, but like the trampoline, being able to know that you just have to hold up to just keep going higher on the trampoline, like you probably would have figured that out, but I didn't when I was younger. I know that. Yeah, it's kind of a game that's cruel to try and complete in the days before the internet. I mean, now we have walkthroughs and like let's you know guides, but man, it's pretty a lot of trial and error to progress in that back in the day when this was released. Yep, for sure. And then you know, for me, this game I always had great memories of because I'd play it with my cousins, and <laughs> that's kind of an interesting story because my I never had the NES growing up, but my cousins did, and they actually got this game, had no label on it, and they found it out in a street gutter. So that's how this game kind of like came into their possession. So it's kind of like this weird sort of like creepy pasta story before like the internet even existed where we had this mystery game that came out of like a gutter and like nobody understood how it worked. And <laughs> um, so, I, and we actually got pretty far in the game. I remember we would, would have sleepovers and we, we progressed pretty, pretty far into the game, much further than I can get now without help. Um, my cousins were a few years older than me though. So that helped. But, um, Still, just yeah, for an NES game, it's sort of out there on its own. There aren't there aren't really games like that. I think the the music's interesting, the animation is great, and that opening scene still just kind of sticks with me um, with that city backdrop and the lights uh, and the way the characters move. I think it looks pretty visually striking um, from the get go, and then it you know once you get into the cave system, it sort of changes um, tone. But yeah, it's it's kind of an experience of a game that sticks with you even if it frustrates with you, frustrates you for sure yeah i mean it's certainly unique on the, on the nes for sure um i think they wanted to do a lot more with it maybe because it just seems like the pacing of that game is very strange um you're like 
40 minutes in the cave system, just, you know, basically kind of doing the same puzzles. Right. For 40 minutes. And then once you finish that, it's like, oh, you're in a cornfield for five minutes. And then you're in this weird factory on an alien planet for five minutes. And I don't know if you, if you've gotten to the end boss, but that is quite, <laughs> it's one of the weirdest end bosses I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, I had to watch the Let's Play of it, but it was bizarre. <laughs> that Yeah, that last end boss is very strange. I've never seen that end boss, I guess. I've never got that far, and I didn't actually finish the entire Let's Play that I had found. But uh, yeah, it's just weird that it's... They spent so much time building that cave system, and then the, the rest of the stuff is just weird afterthoughts. <laughs> that yeah. It seems like they had more planned out that probably just didn't make it into the game. I don't know. Yeah, that could very well be. It definitely isn't yeah, balanced well as far as locations, that's for sure. It's probably important to note that the guy that kind of did this game also was kind of the creator of Pitfall. And when I think about that, there's a lot of similarities. Like, yeah. I could definitely see the guy like the guy who made Pitfall thinking, okay, what am I going to do to advance my this game, you know? Yeah. Well, and as far as like enemy, like hit detection, one hit deaths, like you're right. Like it's very similar. Especially right away, that, now I never made that connection, but even yeah, right away in that cave system, you get those jumping worms. I mean, that could easily have been a scorpion. You know, it's it's like the scorpion in Pitfall. Like you avoid it, otherwise you die. Yep. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, what a strange game. Have you guys played the Wii one at all? I own it. I've been meaning to get into it. I just have not had the time. Yeah, me neither. Looks great. I, I hear great things. I think I have played many games at all on the Wii. I- Bought it, or I got it just to play the party games. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> Said no one ever. <laughs> <laughs> you and 60,000 retired people. <laughs> play them for a couple minutes and I'm done with it. Yeah, we haven't mentioned that Justin is 70 years old, right? <laughs> <laughs> Close. <laughs> the truth's out there now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So my pick, uh, Metal Slug Advance. I didn't play this game until maybe a few years ago uh, when I picked it up in a Game Boy Advance slot. Um, you know, I don't know how to feel about this game. It captures the visual style pretty accurately. It lets you pick from characters like you could in a normal uh, Metal Slug game, which is kind of a run-and-gun um, side-scrolling shooter. Everybody likes to compare it to Contra, um, but I don't know how s- accurate of a statement that is. Um, the things that it does differently, I will say the one problem I have with this game is if you're playing this in the original Game Boy Advance, which when, when this was released, there was not a backlit model of the Game Boy Advance. This game is incredibly dark and difficult to play. Um, and, and some other things that it changes, like key changes from a normal Metal Slug game, which those those started out on the arcade, on the Neo Geo, you get a life bar. Um, on the arcades, obviously, it was a one-hit death, so it's a little bit more forgiving, um, and it kind of has to be because the screen is zoomed in a little bit more, so you don't get to see, you don't get as much of advanced warning when a grenade's being lobbed at you from off-screen. Uh, so there's just like a lot of frustrating elements. Um, they changed also the art style for the Prisoners of War, which I don't appreciate. And I, I just think, like, overall, it tries really hard to be a Metal Slug game, like a portable Metal Slug game. It just doesn't quite feel right. Um, it's better than the Neo Geo Pocket Color attempts. Um, it's more of a faithful arcade port, but I just... It just doesn't quite work for me. What did you guys think of it? Yeah, I mean, I will say it. I was surprised how visually close that they could actually get to the original Neo Geo games on a Game Boy Advance. Um, but like you said, like the, the health bar is forgiving, but it also is not the way that I'm used to playing Metal Slug. Where the way I play Metal Slug now is just hit continue, just keep going, you know? You die, whatever, <laughs> you just keep going, you know? You just, yep. you pretty much brute force it because it's not, you don't play it like the faithful, you know, arcade version. You just brute force your way through it as many lives as you can. And this is like, oh, you died, mission failed, start over. You know, and that's such an abrupt change to how I play Metal Slug that I don't know. It was 
it was a little bit jarring, I guess. I can't say I've played a whole lot of Metal Slug, I don't think. I think we played it on Arcade Gamut, did we, at MGC? Was it? Yeah, I forced you to play through like the last three stages with me. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure that one was broken, though, because we didn't die. Yeah, but, that one was like rigged. But as far as the gameplay, I, I felt it played pretty decent, not playing Metal Slug, I guess, much before. So a um, couple things that bugged me were the enemies, when you advance a little bit, they could still spawn behind you still. So as you're avoiding bombs from in front, they would still randomly spawn and start throwing from behind too. Um, I guess that was really the main thing. I thought it was entertaining to walk up and knife the people though. <laughs> <laughs> but not my favorite type of game, but it was interesting. Yeah, I'll agree that the, the, the spawning was incredibly frustrating. Yeah. Well, and okay, so I can't remember, but I think you could back, you could not backtrack in the arcade versions, or at least the first couple of Metal Slugs, right? Yeah, the screen I think only progressed right. I believe so. So yeah, it is a little weird that you can go backwards um, in this game so regularly, and then yeah, the cheap spawning makes it miserable. Yep, there there is a lack of animation, but compared to like the arcade games, but what do you expect? You know. Right, yeah. You can't compete with the power of the Neo Geo. Right. <laughs> Puny little GBA. <laughs> okay, so now we have kind of given a, a an overview and thoughts on, on the three titles presented for By Rent Burn uh, this this episode. Andy, why don't you go ahead and tell us where you would you would rank these games? You know, this one is probably the hardest one that we've had so far. Probably by far. It's all of them have have great potential, but there's also a lot of it that's like if they would have changed one small thing, it would have been a much better experience. So with that said, I'm for buy. I'm going to pick Firepower 2000, the game that I brought, uh, just because I don't know it. It's it's kind of just a calming one for me. I just go in and play it, listen to the music, and just kind of throw bullets at some guys. For my rent, I'm going to pick Boy and His Blob. This is the first time I actually beat that game. Went all the way through it. Definitely needed some help from some online guides on a few things. Uh, cause wow, some of that stuff, I don't know. Even, even the, your best friends in the playground, I don't think they were that smart, but <laughs> it's definitely, I'm glad I did it. It's something that I'm like, okay, I get why people, what people saw in that game. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's still kind of like, uh, there's much better ones out there that kind of do the adventure style game too. And for my burn, I'm going to pick metal slug advance, not because it's really a bad game. It, it's completely serviceable for that. Like I said, I was surprised how, how much it actually looked like a metal slug game. Um, but it's just not the way I want to play metal slug. And that, and that, that's maybe not the game's fault. Like if that was my first experience to, with metal slug, that probably would might be, you know, one of my favorites, but just not the way I play it. So, yeah. What about you, Justin? All right. I do agree. This is a tough one. Um, I've switched them up many times. <laughs> um, I, I believe I got it pretty well set here, though. I'm kind of going the same boat as what you just did. Um, my buy is going to be Firepower 2000. Um, it's not a typical type of game that I would play, but just the aspect that you can have two players, um, one in air, one on ground, I think would make that quite a bit of fun. Um, and it's enjoyable by yourself too. My rent, and I will continue to rent this game, is going to be a boy in his blob. Um, it's one of those games where you own it and you beat it. Why would you ever play it again? So um, I would go with rent for that. Um, I'm going to burn Metal Slug Advance. I don't mind the game. It's just not the type of game that I really enjoy. It's, it's a fun game. I'll probably go through and play it a few times and see how far I can get and stuff. But again, it's not my favorite game, so I'll burn that. How about you, Ryan? 
Well, first of all, Justin, I'm a little annoyed that you burned Biohazard Battle last time because you don't like shooters, but Firepower 2000 <laughs> makes it to the top of your <laughs> list this week. So, screw you on I that. know. It's not a horizontal shooter, though. <laughs> uh, it's because it's not a. It's because it's not a Genesis game. <laughs> I I really am terrible at the up and down side scrolling shooters like that. You're a Genesis. You're racist against Genesis. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> All right. So um, this is going to be a first. I. I'm absolutely with you guys. Like all of these games are interesting and solid enough in their own right with none of them being exceptional. Um, so this is like a very even playing field and I've been changing my list. I thought I knew what I was going to do up until we started talking about these and I, I switched it, but this is going to be the first time where um, I think we're going to come out unanimous on the three of us having the same buy rent burn. I, I would go with firepower 2000 because it's a solid enough shooter. Um, also, It'd be a great game to play by yourself, or if you've got a friend coming over, you know, thinking back to when Couch Co-op happened as a kid, uh, it'd be a good pick-up-and-play game. It'd be perfect for that. It'd be the type of game you'd want laying around in your collection. Um, a Boy and His Blob, as much as I love that, and I think everyone should have that in their NES collection because it is so unique, it it just fits the mold of a rental. It's not the type of game that you're going to sit down and sink hours into. You're going to play with it, get to a point, get frustrated, and put it away for a long time. And like Justin said, once you beat this, you're not going to go back through and play a boy in his blob for speed running fun. I wouldn't hope. Um, so that's where it ends up there. Actually, you should watch a speed run. <laughs> there are people that do it. It's a, it's there a big are. speed run game. Oh, There's, God. You can break that game pretty, pretty crazy. <laughs> well, I guess different strokes, I guess I'll have to check one of those out though. That sounds kind of interesting. Um, so with my buy and my rent out of the way, of course, um, Burn is going to be Metal Slug Advance. Uh, again, just like you guys said, not that it's a particularly bad game, it's just I am a huge fan of the Metal Slug series and the Neo Geo, and this, as much as it wants to be that game, it's just not. Um, so I'll, I'll just torch it and play play the better versions. All right. Yeah, that that's crazy that we all agreed on the same I know, order I'm kind of blown away. Three. Three games for three different people. Especially with swapping them so many times. Like, right. I thought about it all day today at work. Like, what order am I going to do? Well, and you and I had gone through, Justin, you and I had gone through our list yesterday, and it was different for both of us. So. Yep. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> yeah, it, I, I changed it up pretty much right to the last minute, too. <laughs> you ask me tomorrow, it'll probably be different again, but that's what I'm going with. <laughs> it's locked in. It's yep. done. Well, if you're listening, you can lock in yours, because... Uh, Obviously, you're going to put the same exact order as us, right? Probably not. But <laughs> you can put your vote in at weekendpodcast.com. Be sure to put your comment in when you vote so we get t- to know what you uh, have to say about each of these games. Um, and, yeah, you can get notified whenever a new vote is up. So, yeah, check that out, weekendpodcast.com. 